What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and let's continue on with the next part of this section which is actually clicking through the units and actually getting them to play animations as well as going through each of those units. So for this particular section we are going to work with the manager and solely in the manager actually, at least for the most part. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a mouse event. Now for this one, what we're going to do is instead of these uh, regular, I'm going to call them regular mouse events, what we're going to do is we're going to use the global mouse event. And if I remember correctly, when we use the global mouse events, it doesn't matter where it is in the screen, it'll kind of read that. So this is what we're going for here. And I'm going to use global left. Uh, released. Now the reason why we're going to use released instead of pressed is so that let's say in the future when somebody's clicking on a button and they decided oh wait I don't want to do that they can move the cursor off of the actual object itself off the button or whatever other interactable or clickable objects you have in your scene and it won't count. So that's why I'm using global left released instead of pressed. So. You can use pressed if you want, doesn't, I mean, it, it could change the uh, experience, but uh, for now, let's just use released. So with that, I'm going to just erase those two lines there. We don't need it. And what we're going to do is, first of all, expand these two windows, and I'm going to drag them into a single tab here for our manager. In this section here, all we're going to do is we're going to tell our selected unit so here, whenever we press, because it's a global event, we actually need to use the with statement. What we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of things, right? The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go back here. And if we take a look at our unit, we are going to change its state from idle to attack, right? So let's do that now. We'll, we'll type in uh, state equals I think that's it. State equals attack. Yep, that looks good. But then we also need to tell the actual playhead, which is not here, it's in the step event here. So we actually need to tell this playhead. Actually, yeah, it was there before. We need to tell this playhead here to go from wherever it is in the animation, in the idle animation, and swap it back to this um, attack animation here, right? So that's what we needed to do. And to do that, all we have to do is grab this line of code here, which is the layer sequence head position. And then I believe everything should work just fine. But instead of idle start or whatever start position you're looking for, we're going to use the attacks, the attack head position, which if I check real quick, Attack start is what we're looking for here. So instead of idle start, we write attack start, save that out. And let's see what happens when we play our game. If I left click, we can see that our character down here who is uh, selected right now, he plays his attack animation right there, just like that. It's one stabby motion. So it doesn't actually matter where I click, he's going to play that animation, right? Now, if I spam click, he's actually trying to play that sequence over and over again. That is just a flaw that's in the system as it is right now, okay? So eventually, like I said, as we build this system up, we are going to be able to control when we can left click or when we can actually activate these animations. But for now, this is what we're going to be working with. This next section is completely experimental. So um, if it works, that's good. If it doesn't work, then I guess the next logical step will have to be um, with broadcasts or working with broadcasts, but uh, hopefully it'll work. And what we're going to do is in our parent unit, we are going to, I'm just thinking, I'm still thinking whether or not I should actually put this code in. You know what, let's try it. Let's see what happens if, in the case of attack, 
at the end of it here, what we're going to do is right after we start uh, the idle animation, we're going to tell our unit that our turn is finished, right? So let's see what happens if we do that. Um, and let's see what happens when we play the game. Okay, so everyone's, our selected unit is eight. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so it didn't work. I have a feeling that it's actually the, um, the actual combat phase itself and not the um, animation. So let's see what happens when we try to debug that. Okay, so I've just filled this in. Like I said, I want to see if if what we have right here um, after our attack animation, this is temporary by the way, in case that wasn't clear already. We're going to see if this turn finished is actually not the cause of our game not looping through. But like I said, I have a feeling that it's the actual loop itself. So we're in combat phase four, which should be idle. No, it's not. Combat phase four is actually, if I look here, four is um, check finish. Let me just count that up. One, two, three, and four. Actually, it's in process. Oh, actually, no. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it was headed straight to check finish. Okay, so I know that it's not... Um, it isn't um, this, it's, this isn't the problem. What actually is a problem is in the wait phase, what we actually need to do is wait for the actual unit to actually tell itself that it's finished. Let's see what happens if well, let's see what happens if we just add this one line in. All right, so here we go. We're in combat phase two now. We're in the idle phase, which is good. Let's left click. All right, good. So it moved on to phase four. Perfect. Um, and so if I press enter, I think I forgot, I've completely forgotten. But we know that it works, right? So it now goes into the wait phase and it waits for the selected unit to be finished. And once it does, then then it'll move into the next phases, which again is check finish. Um, for now, let's get rid of these lines of code here, because technically we're not going to need them at the like at the very end, right? The final draft of this won't need these uh, keyboard checks. So you can get rid of them outright if you wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to comment these out. Let's now try playing our game and see what happens. All right, so we're in phase two and our selected unit is unit seven. Let's try left clicking, right? And so now we've gone down, we're back at phase two, right? It's very quick. It's very quick because there's not a lot of stuff happening and our sprite is kind of small. Um, but you can see here now that our selected unit is now unit eight, All right? If I click again, just keep an eye on this number here. Right, there you go, it goes to unit six, and then it goes to unit nine. Now, technically each and every single one of these units has finished their turn, right? So what happens if we're at the very end and we try left clicking again? Right, you see that our combat phase goes crazy. <laughs> it goes insane. The reason for that is because if we go into our unit, and if we draw text on top of all this extra text, what we're going to do is we're going to add in another line. Yes, I know that uh, it's, it's getting full, but um, just bear with me. <laughs> and we are going to add the string. Um, what was the name of the variable? Turn finished. Okay, so we need to debug this just to make sure and to prove a point. Right, so here we go, turn finished. And you can see that everyone's turn is not finished yet. Let's left click through, 
six and then eight good everything's still working everything's fine and you can see that the numbers are now starting to change from zero to one and the last one is at one All right and after that the number goes crazy why is that now like i said it's because we don't have a way for us to take these turn finished units and set them all back into false. How do we do that? Um, well, actually, we are going to do that right here with a for loop before. This for loop is going to be inside of a, an if statement, right? So it's going to look something like this, right? We're going to check if the number of units that have finished is greater than the DS list size, or the number of units is equal to or greater than, just to be safe, then we need to reset all of these units, turn finished flags to false. But before we can do that, we actually need to go back into the create event here. And on top of, this is the manager, by the way, on top of the combat phase or close to it, we are going to write uh, units finished. And we're going to start this off at zero. This variable is going to be important for us because when we check to see how many units have finished, this will be the number that will be returned. In order to increment that though, we need to go back into the step event, go down to the wait phase, and right down here, just before we go into the process phase, we're going to go here in the if statement and say units finished plus plus, right? So basically when our unit, uh, that's not what we're looking for, when our unit uh, finishes their turn or when it finishes playing the animation, just like what it says over here, once it's finished playing its animation and this variable turn finished is true, the step event here for our manager is going to say, okay, this unit is done. Let's add one. That's what plus plus means. It will add one to the units finished. And then it'll go through. Playing this game at this stage is not going to give us any results because right now we need to now check to see if the units finished, if the value of units finished is equal to or greater than the list size of global units. All right, so basically it looks something like this. Okay, so I just wrote up this entire bit of code. Basically, what we're going to do is, like I said before, we're going to check if the units that have finished, if this number is greater than the actual size of the global units list. And if it is, it's going to run this for loop down here. And all it basically does is that with each unit or each object that's inside the global units list, it's going to take this turn finished variable that we have, which again is down here, and it's going to flip it to false, basically resetting their turn finished flags. And then at the end of that, the units finished will then set itself to zero, basically resetting. So let's see what happens if we play the game again. All right, so everything looks fine for now. Let's just quickly click through and hope for the best. So seven, eight, nine okay good now we can see that everything's set back to zero right all of their turn finished variables this last number on the end here that's all set to zero it's being reset and we're back at the start up here so that's basically it for sorting through our units right we now have a way to be able to debug which unit is selected and also do something have that unit actually do stuff 
right? So I'm going to leave it here. I guess I don't need a third video for this section, but um, this is adequate for us. We can work with this for a little while. In the next section, what we'll do is we'll actually add in some enemy units and everything will still be controlled by the player, but we're going to add in some extra, some enemy units and we'll start actually dealing some damage and really focusing on the actual attack and damage phases here. So stick around for that one. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.